Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall right here in Northern California on Thursday, July 23rd, 2015 at 1 17 p.m. And that's Pacific Standard Time. Let's give God some glory today. Give God some glory by telling your story. The Lord had uh, asked me to do two things today. This is the second one, and I joyfully and obediently obey, and we'll share this. Uh, so let's go right into it. In 2009, I had the most intense, real, emotional vision that I've ever had in my life, and I've had many visions. But this one actually had me in tears after the vision. And uh, it happened in 2009. And so I, I want to share it, you know, just like the video before this about the dream I had in sixth grade. The Lord has told me, this is the season. Today is the day for you to share this. Because, see, he didn't show it to me in vain and I'm not laboring in vain and and he doesn't just do things just to do things it, there's a purpose and and uh, God you know God is a God of design and and purpose with everything he does if he says let there be light that light is for a reason to be used <laughs> well, let's <laughs> let's stick to the vision so here's the vision now remember this was in uh, 2009 I originally shared it in 2012, uh, over three years ago, but I don't pe think many people watched it, but it's still on here. Just go to my video manager and search for a 2009 Vision a Great Tsunami, something like that. It's, it's on here. So in, in this vision, in, in 2009, my security company was peaking. I had so many clients and was so busy uh, you know that when I, I but I still uh, remained true to the ministry and to uh, serving in in the church and sometimes I'd go in there after a 12 or 16 hour shift with with no sleep and and uh, uh, and, and assist and help and, and uh, I'm telling you I learned a lot I grew a lot in the faith and um, so just keeping that in mind that, uh, you know, I, I was doing uh, security work at the time. I want you to just understand that I, I've come to a greater revelation that a lot of this that happened is symbolic. But I'm telling you, this is the season. This is the season that this will come to pass. So in real life. Remember, we're talking real life now. This actually happened to me, what I did in 2009. I was working at a church, and I'm going to show you a Google Earth image of where it was. And uh, I was an usher. And normally I'd work the east door, you know, basically is to let people in and out to the, to the children's area and to restrooms in the back. It, it was a rented school. It could seat about 100 people. Um, with just chairs, you know, in a rented school. I'm going to show you the area too. And uh, on this particular day, they had moved me to the west door, which meant uh, I'm opening the door to greet people and then opening the door when they leave, greeting them when they come, and then uh, open the door uh, when they leave. Thank you. Thanks for coming. God bless you. And so sitting on this, uh, standing on this west door, I greeted everybody and they came in and sat down. Now everybody's looking forward at the pastor who's giving a message. And when I was an usher, I would stand behind, you know, when you're an usher, everybody should be looking this way. So being behind them, you can literally like lift your hands and pray over them, especially during altar calls for salvation and rededication and baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'd be back there just praying my heart out that someone would respond to an altar call. And as I looked out, the congregation, I noticed that 80% of the chairs were empty. The pastor up there is preaching his heart out. <sighs> Hallelujah. He's preaching his heart out. And there was like 15 people there. And all of the chairs were empty. 
And I was grieved in my spirit. And I was sitting there back by myself just looking at, I said, God, where is everybody? Because it was such an important message. And he said, some of them stayed up too late last night. Some of them were in bars last night and woke up hungover. They actually paid uh, uh, they paid a, a, a fee at the door to be able to go in and get smashed by alcohol and drugs. And so now they're hung over when these doors are open for free. But not for long, he said. And he said, some of them are home watching sports. Sports are more important than, to, than me, Paul. And it was very emotional that God was really speaking to me. And so I had this vision. I went into this vision while conversating with God about where everybody was at. And in this vision that began instantly, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. I had opened the door. Now, remember, this is a vision. I didn't actually do this. I started having a vision inside the church while I'm working. And in this vision, I heard a loud noise and there had been a major earthquake and it had caused a tsunami and the tsunami you could literally see it and hear it and it was heading right for us and I opened the door to look and I saw this huge major major uh, wall of water and dark clouds uh, just just coming right towards the entire city it was going to be like a direct hit on the building we're in. And I noticed that suddenly people from all over the community were running. They were on their bicycles. They were running as fast as they can. They were pedaling as fast as they can. They were driving as fast as they can. I remember from all areas, from the north, south, east, and west, they were running. They were driving. They were, they were pedaling in fear and you know thank you Jesus I'm so glad I'm so glad that Jesus saved us and you know where they were they were heading to the church they weren't heading to government buildings they weren't heading to FEMA for assistance they weren't heading to uh, to their congressmen they weren't heading to their families they were heading to the church because they knew that this was of God this destruction that was coming was of God suddenly they realized God is real and this is his destruction and, you, and where were they running? To the church. Now listen up closely. If you, if you have any love for lost souls at all, uh, listen to the rest of this. And so as I looked out and saw, I mean, I'm talking all races, you know, uh, female, males, uh, just all, all running towards the door where, you know, I'm guarding the door and inside, you know what, there's safety. The presence of God is in there. There's people praying in there. And as they began to get closer, God said, close the door. He, he said, close the door. And it, it was a command. You know, and in my line of work, it was to save people, to help people, not abandon people. And so I closed the door. And I knew people out there were going to perish when the destruction caught up to them. And I didn't understand why. And God said, now lock it.
And I don't know why he chose me to reveal all these things. But when he said, lock it, I said, really, God, they'll perish. And he commanded me again, lock the door. And, 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 and so I locked the door. And there was people pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding. And I was so caught up in this vision that the service had ended and people were walking by me and I was in tears. And they're like, are you okay, Paul? And I didn't say anything to anybody. You know, I had a lot of friends there that are still my friends to this day. My wife had been sitting down in, in the front and she came out and I said, let's go home. And I was trying to keep my emotions in check all the way home so my wife didn't notice because we, we just left church, you know. It was, it was supposed to be a beautiful day, <laughs> you know. Go home and have some lunch, rest. And when we got home, I just went and sat on the couch. And my wife noticed there was tears in my eyes just like they are now. And she said, what happened? And I explained to her the vision. And then right there in front of my wife, I asked God. I said, God, would you really do that to people? And he answered with just two words. Two words. He said, ask Noah. Which, you know, I later came to a revelation a couple years later that I will have a chance to literally ask Noah because nothing that comes out of God's mouth can be a lie. And I'm, I'm inviting you to come be a part of the people who can ask Noah what it was like. And I want to close in saying this. As we see all the chaos around the world and all the, the personal attacks on YouTube and the this and the that and everybody, you know, trying to be separate and being over here and being over there. I'm part of this clique. I'm part of this clique. You're a clique. But let me ask you something. Are any of you here on YouTube, are those your 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 sons or daughters that are running to the door of the ark as it's closing or any of them your parents that are running to the door of the ark is closing what are you focused on right now are they your aunts your uncles your grandchildren your grandmas are they out there are they lost in this world and they're going to come running upon a door that's closed as destruction just consumes them do you have anybody out there that's lost because this is what God spoke to me today, six years later. He said, Paul, I, I warned you of this in advance and I showed you. What are you doing about it? Let me show you the area real quick. What are you doing about it? He said, well, that's why I'm sharing this. What are we doing about it? Because it'll come to pass. I, I like using visuals. This is the exact area where this occurred. The vision and in real life where I was at. I'm going to show you. Thank you, Jesus. It was this school right here. Just a few blocks from my home. They were running this way. I was inside. I was inside this door right here. Let me check something out. I know who's uh, Tahoe that is. I believe it's the Tahoe. So I'm standing on this door right here. Can everybody see that? And I'm looking out. And here's the community, see? There, it's over here. It, it, see, all, there, there's only one way in and one way out to this school. They don't have church there anymore. And you see all these houses and homes. They were literally speeding. And, and off this, 
I'm going to show you where we're at here. Looking west, I-5, see that? Sa uh, Sac International Airport. So we're right here, so let's look west. And you're going to see it's the ocean. Can everybody see that? It's San Francisco. Here I am right here. It's just north of Sacramento. It's San Francisco. This area. It had hit here. And all the water was coming here. Oregon, see that? This is coming in. So what I want to do for God is to reach as many people as I can and make a point of not just sharing dreams, sharing visions, not just warning them and sounding the alarm, but asking them, are you saved? Do you remember the days? Anybody here remember the days of are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Because look, we are in the season where we're going to see these things happen. The media is reporting it. The government is reporting it. Everybody's reporting it and preparing for it. And God wants to know right now, having seen all these things, and I know I'm not the only one, there's thousands of watchmen around the whole world that have been shown this stuff in advance, Amos 3.7, before it happens. God's wanting to know right now, today, amidst all the chaos and everything, what are you doing about it? Specifically me, what are you doing about this vision I showed you that brought you to tears? Well, for now, I'm making a video. But this weekend, I'm going to mention Jesus Christ to every single person I can, especially my family. God bless you. Thank you for listening.